shining a light on those who think outside the box. A world filled with dreamers and people who rock. Hey everybody, Sherry Leopold here. I'm so excited to be with you for this episode of Outside the Box with Sherry Leopold, where we shine a light on amazing humans in the world who are doing great things, who are outside the box thinkers, and who lead with a servant heart. Today is no different, and I thought maybe I'll just start and tell you that my guest is a circus performer, and she is able to juggle six balls at a time. But that's actually not correct. My next guest, Helen Har Harwood Snell, is actually someone who is an incredible person, but she's actually a storyteller, which is why I started with that story to begin with. But Helen's view of the world changed when she had uh, her special needs daughter. And she views the world with a different lens and, and it allowed her to really see the world differently. She's also a ghost writer and a professional storyteller. She helps business owners sh share their story in a unique way to impact their marketing to help create the most success in their business. So I want to welcome Helen Harwood Snell. Thank you so much for being my guest, Helen. Hello. I wish I had my juggling balls with me, but I left them in my other room. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we talked before we got on. I was like, yeah, I'm going to make up a story. She's like, yes, go ahead. That's great. But yeah. anyway, uh, I just I just had to poke a little fun because because that's who I am. But I'm so <laughs> happy to have you here. I love the fact that you help business owners really develop that story that helps make their business come alive and what they do come alive in a way that actually captures their potential customers' attention. So, and I know you're really passionate about that, but I, I don't think that's what you've always done, is it? Uh, so tell us a little bit, Helen, about how you got to this space where you're doing the ghostwriting and where you're doing um, the storytelling and, the, and helping uh, business owners. That's, you know, we all have a story um, and our story is always changing and always growing. Um, so I think I, I need to start, first of all, by saying I am the first in my family of a long line of happily employed people to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so this whole thing is very different for me. And my first foray into that was with a network marketing business where I kind of felt like I needed to have my own story that was separate from the story of that larger brand. And that's kind of what began this whole storytelling journey for me. Um, I mean, although I've always been interested in story and poetry and all of those things and learning to, how would I say, learning to show up in the world, um, uniquely but without as you had at the beginning making up a story or exaggerating the truth we are all unique we are all like beautiful the way we are and the whole idea of storytelling is just to embrace who you are and share that with the world you don't have to be you know, uh, an Olympic athlete, you don't have to have a, a disability that you've overcome, you don't have to, you know, have a special needs daughter like I do, you just have to be yourself. And so, so my journey has been one of, of learning that really about myself. Um, my daughter was actually a big help in that because she kind of grounded me to see the world around me instead of being just part of that world. And that's really helped my storytelling capability as well as training and courses and things that I've taken. But I, I think the timing of this interview I mentioned to you just before we got on is um, the timing is pretty unique as well, because even as I have been branding, storytelling, teaching storytelling, helping tell other people's stories. It took me a while to be able to tell my own. Um, I didn't think I was important enough to have a story to tell. Um, I am divorced and that was a sense of failure for me. And so 
I didn't want to talk about that. I didn't want to talk about really anything about me other than the people around me and the things that I could do in the world around me. And so, you know, kind of, kind of having to overcome that was, was a, it was a process in telling stories for other people and continuing to teach that to others finally started to open up my own eyes. So books that I've written for other people, blogs that I've written for other people, suddenly I started to see that I had a story inside of me. And so I wrote in a compilation book last year, the first story of me, and I know it won't be the last, um, but there is this confidence that we need in being able to tell our story, being able to show up in the world and just be proud of who we are, no matter where we're at. I, I couldn't agree more. And Helen, would you say that most people feel like the life they're living or the life that they have lived so far is not very noteworthy. Like that that's a very common thing, especially for business owners. If they don't have some big dramatic tale that they can tell where they leapt tall buildings in a single bound, like that that's not worthy of sharing their story, that their everyday story or the the maybe the, some of the trials they went through aren't that great or big enough to share. Absolutely. I, I think that's one of the one of the things that I find with working with entrepreneurs mostly is as they tell me their story through the the unique interview process that I have with helping people develop their biographies and figure figure out that story. Um, there are a lot of aha moments because I'll write up uh, something that says, hey, this person does X, Y, Z, shows up in the world this way. And they're like, is, is that really like who I am? Is that really it, and it's really an interesting process. And I find, especially women, it's harder. Uh, yeah. Women tend to be a lot more humble about themselves. I, I heard something a while ago and I thought, man, that's so right. That, you know, a man who's like 50% qualified for a job would walk in with all the confidence in the world and uh, apply for a job. And a woman who was 90% qualified would even question herself if she was going to apply for the job yeah. because she wasn't hundred percent there. Right. So I think it's harder, especially for whatever reason for, for female entrepreneurs, not all, because some of them, I know some who are full of confidence, but a lot of us don't like to brag about ourselves. And I think that's the whole thing about understanding your story is that you're actually not bragging. You don't have to be a juggler. You don't, you don't, you don't have to have some crazy story. Oh, fun. <laughs> it, yeah, it would be. I wish I could juggle. I've tried. Um, I, I think the whole thing is what people don't understand is that you are marketing yourself. You're not marketing your service or your product, especially now in the world. A website doesn't sell anymore. People want to buy a person. And so whatever your story is, if it's, you know what, I'm a regular housewife, I'm, you know, live in a regular neighborhood with a white picket fence and two and a half kids and a dog and whatever the, the national statistics are. That's okay because you bring that into your business differently than someone else who is a jet setter or someone else who's a single mom or someone else who has a different set of background training that would lead them to that point. That's what people buy. And that's why it's important to know your story and share your story because people resonate with who you are and that's what they want to buy. So the kind of the over top, um, it's inspiring, but it's also, um, I don't want to say tiring. I was going to say tiring, but people want to be their own hero. So if your story is that big, people don't feel like they can relate to you right. because their story isn't that big. Right. So it 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 does tend to need some grounding to get people to resonate with who you are. Yeah. And I think that's probably one of the things that because there are people that have this like jaw dropping, like, holy cow story. And yes, we're like kind of awed by them. But there is that element like you commented is that. You know, sometimes that's like so far afield of from where we see ourselves that 
it isn't as relatable as we'd like to to be. And I think that's why we need people that will co- like yourself who will coach people on how to deliver their story, if you will, in a manner that is both relatable, but also it's still inspiring. Um, because obviously when we're telling our story and we're marketing, so to speak, we want to make sure that we are encouraging and inspiring to somebody to take action for something, yeah. whatever it is that we're sharing. But I want to I want to touch on on something that you said. I know you you mentioned that it's harder for women. And I kind of want to just lean into this a little bit when because you said about women being more humble and 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 I, I don't know, maybe that's not the right word. I think maybe we're just sort of afraid to talk about ourselves, but maybe it's humble. I don't really know. But uh, I, I like to say when I work with people that, you know, if you know, people say, well, you shouldn't brag or you sound arrogant and things like that. I always say the qualifier, Helen, is that like, if it's true, it isn't bragging. So if you say like you're an eight time best international best-selling author, or I'm a 12 time author, you know, international best-selling author. If I say that and it's true, that's not bragging. That's actually true. And I think there has to be uh, a way that we, especially as women, can kind of cut through that and and really see the truth for what it is, because that is our story, right? Like, and, and I think if, if I can, truth. sorry, if I can just interject, I think Absolutely. I think the timing of when you use that story is also important. Oh yes, if, if you are you know, trying to gain the confidence of an audience, if you're, you're, you know, making a presentation, if, if you need something to show your credentials, that's great. But sometimes that can actually look like boasting, if it's not said in a way that's going to be helpful to the person who's receiving it. So yeah. that, again, is part of part of storytelling is knowing what parts of your story to tell at what point and who to share it with and why. Because again, I think the whole idea of boasting, if you just throw that information out there constantly, that could be perceived as boasting. But if you're saying it in a way that's going to help other people, then it's, it's not right. It, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a qualifier. It's um, you know, this is my experience. I can help you get there or I know how hard it is to get started. I did it, look what happened when I took that first step. You know, there's lots of reasons and lots of of ways that we can share that story. And we should be proud of the things that we've done, but it's all about the context of how we use those stories. And, you know, I I love that a big part of of your work is how we show up in the world and, and how we wanna help others. And I think that's a big part of understanding how to tell those stories and and being helpful in the world. And a hundred percent, I couldn't agree more that that timing is really critical. Somebody that no matter what conversation you have with them, they tell you about something that they've done or accomplished that sort of ventures into that uh, arena. I think that like when we're being introduced and, and things like that. We have that expectation. We're going to hear some of those things. But I, I was actually on a meeting a little bit earlier today, and it was very interesting because the person that was presenting when they were introduced, it was, and it's a close friend of mine, and it, but it was very interesting listening to her be introduced. And she said, thank you so much for that. And then she said, you know, sometimes you you hear that and you think, wow, I have accomplished a few things. <laughs> she said, and sometimes it's good to remind yourself that that you have accomplished some things. So thank you for that. Like she was just like, taking that second to acknowledge, like, I guess I have done like some really impactful things. And I, I think that it was it was just really a sweet moment to to see her go. Oh yeah, I have to take that moment and say, yeah, I have, I have done some things, and I have impacted some people. I was like, think sometimes that's that moment that you 
realize that you're on the right track, like, and that you, uh, you are serving and standing in your purpose. But I yeah. totally agree with the timing. I think we expect it in a, in a bio or when we're getting introduced or something like that. But I love the fact that that's, that's one of the services that you provide, Helen, is, is really having those conversations about when your story is important, where to be sharing it, and, and the way to frame your story so that it makes sense to your business. Can you, can you share an example of somebody or that you've worked with, for example, about how they have incorporated using their story into their business in a way that has helped them move their business forward? I know you just did a a webinar on this and, and actually had real life examples. So I know you'll have something to lean into, but I'd like for our viewers to get a taste of like what it actually looks like when you take somebody from this spot who doesn't know how to do it uh, to the spot where they go, oh, I get it. I get yeah. it. Use my story. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that workshop. Um, it, w it was a uh, decided to put this on with a confidence coach who I know um, her name's Sandra Di Domenico. So I'll give her a shout out. Um, the whole idea of finding that confidence in your story, <clears throat> pardon me. And then we took um, the audience through an actual workshop where they worked. So they weren't just sitting there listening. They were taking bits and pieces of what we, we gave them and then building their stories from that. And I'll, I'll just give you an example of one of the women who was in the group. She is, um, she runs a business called um, mm -mm -mm, Equine Assisted Learning, I believe is what it stands for, EAL. And this is where people are taught teamwork and um, communication and all sorts of things using specially trained horses. It's a really cool thing. In her story, she had been a school teacher and had not made the connection that she was still teaching people. She kind of had this um, long story, but, but she ended up leaving the school system for um, personal reasons. And because of that, I think she carried this almost like piece of shame that she wasn't a teacher anymore. And yet we were able to say, oh, my goodness, like, don't you see how you being a teacher is so beautiful in this environment because you're just teaching in a different way. So, you know, talk about outside the box. She had um, she embraced that and she actually immediately be began posting things about that on her social media accounts, which was so great. Um, and those are the kinds of things that when you uncover those little things in your story that you forget about or you are afraid to talk about and suddenly it's a point of connection you know um i mentioned um i don't know if i mentioned this earlier in the conversation today or if it was in a video i was recording earlier so please forgive me because i was recording another video this morning um talking about the fact that i'm divorced and it wasn't something that i liked to talk about because I felt shame in that. And I felt like I was a failure as opposed to that was a failed incident in my life or that, you know, my marriage was a failure, but I wasn't a failure as a person. And I had carried that with me into my business where I was kind of self-sabotaging myself because I felt like a failure. So if something was going well in my business, I would do things to derail it because I didn't feel like I deserved it because I was a failure. So coming up with stories like that for me, me to be able to share that now with other people, now that I've uncovered that and I see that will help people realize that, you know, sometimes if they're ashamed or afraid to share a story, there's usually because there's some baggage behind that and they really need to think about hey if I showed up and shared this with the world how many people would this help because there's so many people out there just like me oh I think so and I you know I think we always want to hide those kind of those parts and I know that's something that's changed in if you want to say my story also with how I've shared because I grew up in domestic violence and until probably about a year ago, I never mentioned it at all, although it has impacted the work that I do on every level. 
Uh, but I actually just really never shared it. It wasn't because I was ashamed of it. For me, it's interesting, but I always want to come off as this very positive energy and light. And I was worried about injecting something that wasn't um, a positive situation into it. But I've since learned that um, in the storytelling part of it, if you will, is that the navigation through that and how the lessons, the positive lessons that I've taken from a situation that was really difficult was how that narrative has come out for me. But that has allowed me to connect with a completely different uh, type of person exactly. in my business as well. And on a different level, right? I think people see you know, you as more human, like, right. And I think that, yes. and, of- and I think even, even just the lesson in that Sherry, for people to see if they have come through a situation like that, or know someone who does, um, or who has, or who needs to come out of a situation like that, to see that there is this positivity out there in the world from someone who overcame it, like how inspiring is that? Because you can, you know, I'll I'll use my own example because I can resonate with this better, but I could volunteer with special needs. Um, I could do things with special Olympics, you know, whatever that might be, because that was a passion for me, but it makes it more of a passion. It makes it more of a story when people understand that I have a child with special needs and that's how I got involved. And it, I mean, it has evolved and evolved since then that like I've taken training in in autism and all sorts of things because I've become so inspired by that community but the personal connection that starts it is always the point of the story always yeah, always and, and I think one of the things the word that popped into my mind when you were sharing that was the word context you know is yeah. what it gives such great context to what you're speaking on. And that was kind of like, I think for me, uh, like looking at that, that's what made sense because the, the content of what I was sharing was not an issue, but giving it a greater context of where that came from, I think is more impactful. And it means more to somebody who is going to take your courses, for example, which I want to talk about, uh, next and you did bring up that you were recording a video and you have something really really exciting i know you just did the webinar with sandra who is amazing uh but i i want to talk about you have a course that you are launching that will be available and um we're going to talk about where they can get that but tell us a little bit helen about the course and who it would be for sure so you know, again, going back to the whole uh, <laughs> seeing myself as a failure, I've been working on this course for three years, believe it or not. Um, I would get so far and I would stop and I would change it and I would try to perfect it. And then I'd procrastinate about how I was going to load it up online and blah, 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 blah. So again, timing is great because the course is now going out. Um, I've hired somebody to help me because we can't always do all these things on our own. The course is really for people. I'm going to say two things. So there is a free unit available called My Story Bio that is just for people to to start to understand the value of their own story, their own little biography that they can use in their introduction or um, on their website or their social media pages. That's something that people can kind of try to grapple with and, and get hold of on their own if they don't want to have someone else write that for them. But from that story, I wanted people to realize that there is actually a marketing tool in storytelling that people who who would need this course, people who are baffled by social media, who don't know how to introduce themselves when they when they go to an event, who who have difficulty asking for a sale, who um, who don't understand um, maybe the nuances of the sales process. And that can be a lot of us at any different time. So the whole thing about storytelling is it it actually has a, a neural connection to someone else's brain. It changes 
the whole reaction of your brain when you're introduced to a sale of any kind, your your brain takes over and goes into this, oh, I don't know, sketchy, it's a sale, I don't want to be pushed into something I don't want to buy, whether you're conscious of it, most of the time you're not because our subconscious is so such a big part of our brain. Um, we're in this defense mode. And when you tell a story, there is a neural connection between the brain of the storyteller and the brain of the listener that diffuses that uh, fear reaction, let's call it, or that protective mode that the brain has you in. And it connects you in such a way that it, the listener wants to hear the outcome of the story. The listener wants to connect to who the main character of that story is and cheer for them. Our, our brains are wired for story. So storytelling is for anyone who wants to either get better at the sales process, start learning the sales process, finding really simple things to post on social media. Uh, that's one of the things that I talk about all the time. You can take stories from your everyday life and make social media content that has a connection to your business or a connection to some inspiration that you want to share without paying for you know a year's worth of content or somebody to develop it for you. It's all in the stories and it's all in you. Yeah, I think that that's just an overcomplicated uh, process for most people. They, <laughs> it is. they also often think as business owners, everything has to have my product or I have to be showing Absolutely it or not. overtly talking about it. And, you know, it goes back to the whole thing, the know, like, and trust. I, I, I'm also famous for saying, you know, yes, people do business with who they know, like, and trust, but do you know, like, and trust yourself? Because you mm -hmm. never get to that second step with a customer if you don't have that relationship with yourself. Absolutely. So I want to uh, have you share, Helen, um, where people can get a hold of this course. Because I think it'd be very, very impactful for anyone who is either in the public speaking and coaching and course writing, course content. All kinds of people are going to be interested in learning this process and taking this course with you. So can you share with us where we can grab hold of that and also the free course? Sure. So I am just putting together um, a new landing page for all of that material. And you'll be able to access that through my Linktree account. So that's got kind of the up-to-date stuff that's going on all the time. If I have a webinar coming up or anything, it's there. Um, and, and that's Although my website is there, it's just kind of, it's not the same anymore as websites used to be. So Linktree is the best way to keep track of, of what I have going on. Um, and what you will find is if you do sign up for that, the course, uh, there will be a link to that free story bio as part of that. So you'll make sure that you don't miss it because they kind of go hand in hand. Um, and there will be another free way to get involved with that too. And that's if you want to look at uh, storytelling um, for social media, I'm putting out a guided um, kind of a two part social media storytelling challenge. So five days where I hold hands with you, and then 20 days where you kind of do it on your own, and I follow up and help you online. So uh, that's going to be a freebie as well. And so there's a couple ways that you can get involved in the storytelling. Oh, I love that. So you definitely need to connect with Helen at Linktree. I can't say it's not Linktree. There's the dots in the weird place there. But you can see it. It's Linktree. And you can go. It's Helen Harwood Snell uh, after the Linktree uh, lead in. Uh, I'm so excited for people to get the opportunity to work with you, Helen. Also, you can in book a time in that link tree to actually talk with Helen to find out maybe what's the best route for you to take. And it might be one on one personal coaching that you want to talk to her about. You know, everybody's going to have a different need. So the most important thing is that if you want to know your story and be able to tell your story well, Helen Harwood Snell is going to be one of those people who can help you craft that and help you show up as the best version of yourself so that you can serve everyone else that you're that you're working with. So um, thank you so much, Helen, for being my guest today and, and really sharing with us how important our story is and being able to tell it 
efficiently and and concisely and 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 being able to introduce ourselves simply uh but yet effectively and i love that you do all of those things uh thank you so much for being my guest today helen uh, thank you so much for being here it's always a pleasure to hang out with you sherry and we'll see you on the next episode of outside the box with sherry leopold thank you for being with us today shining a light on those who think outside